Welcome to the podcast, The Life of the Actor Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey DeForest Bogart was born on Christmas Day in 1899 in New York City. Humphrey Bogart's father, Dr. Belmont DeForest Bogart, was a cardiovascular surgeon who also enjoyed boating and fishing. His mother was Maude Humphrey, a highly successful commercial artist who had training as an illustrator in France and New York. He was the couple's first child, followed by two sisters. Humphrey's mother earned more money than her husband, who has a substantial practice as a medical specialist. Unfortunately, his mother committed suicide later in life, while his father succumbed to drug addiction. Bogart's mother and father were well off, which allowed the children to spend their early years in a high-end Upper West Side apartment. The young Humphrey was educated in some of the best schools in the country. Nevertheless, the young student was not very interested in after-school activities and was rather indifferent to instruction. He started his education at Delancey School, a private institution, and continued at Trinity School, one of the most prestigious schools in New York. Years later, he was expelled from the Phillips Academy, a boarding school for various reasons, including poor performance and academics, inappropriate conduct, drinking, smoking, and claims that he threw a school official into a pond. Because of lack of interest in education, Bogart chose not to attend college, much to the dismay of his parents. Before starting a career in acting in 1921, Humphrey Bogart served his time in the United States Army towards the end of World War I. From 1918 to 1921, he was part of activities that involved ferrying troops to and from Europe. It was during this time that he acquired the signature Lisp. Although the events remain uncertain to this day, it was also during the Navy service that he acquired the scar on his lip that singled him out from the other actors of his day. Early in his career, Bogart played juvenile roles in country house comedies in New York City in the 1920s and 30s. He was a bit player, but enjoyed a good run in the city's theater scene. His moderate success on Broadway paved the way for his later adventures in Hollywood. Bogart first enjoyed public adoration in the mid-1920s as a lead in the 1925 play Cradle Snatchers. Nevertheless, he did not conquer Hollywood instantly. His involvement with the movie started with two short films. The first he did in Los Angeles as The Dancing Town in 1928, and the second was The Broadway Like That in 1930. They did not do well enough to place him in the limelight. After signing a contract with Fox Film Corporation, Humphrey Bogart was cast in supporting roles, which did not help to propel his career. He made around 10 films that were not as successful as he had hoped, and so he left California and went back to the East Coast. He continued his acting on stage. On the return to Broadway, he found critical acclaim in 1936 with his role in The Petrified Forest. It was soon adopted into a Hollywood movie, which brought Bogart back to the West Coast. The movie was a success. Because of this, he was given opportunities to play roles in films once again. During this time, he was typecast in films such as A Gangster. He also starred in various B-movies, playing tough guys. In 1941, Humphrey Bogart became part of a film that would bring attention to his talent and range. This film was instrumental in landing him a role one year later in the movie Casablanca, the film that propelled him to stardom. His reputation as a major Hollywood actor was established in 1941, in the film entitled High Sierra. Humphrey Bogart played the notorious criminal Roy Earl, who was paroled only to take part in the high-profile armed robbery. Bogart portrayed this gangster role with a level of complexity that would make him a Hollywood legend after his death in 1957. Weary and middle-aged Roy Earl was the alter ego character that allowed Bogart to showcase his acting chops. High Sierra paved the way for another role that helped establish him as a lead Hollywood actor. Before he was cast as Nick Blade in Casablanca in 1942, Bogart made another movie in 1941, The Maltese Falcon. He assumed the character of Detective Sam Spade. The film adaptation of the book of the same name is now considered a Hollywood classic. With the film's box office success and Bogart's Oscar nomination for the role, he soon became the biggest lead star of Warner Brothers. Humphrey Bogart made many of the screen classics of the 1940s, including To Have and To Have Not, The Big Sleep, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, Key Largo, in the 1950s. He continued to play the lead in pictures and also become important Hollywood films. In the 1950s, he continued to play the lead in Hollywood pictures that also became important Hollywood films, including A Lonely Place, Sabrina, The Cane Mutiny. 
Fans of Hollywood films typically associate Humphrey Bogart with the movie Casablanca, which was directed by Michael Curtis. The film was released in 1942. Bogart and the lovely Ingrid Bergman were given the lead roles. Bogart played the character of the expatriate Rick Blaine, a nightclub owner caught in a complex web. He was also caught in a romantic tug of war with irresistible Bergman. Contrary to rumors, the on-screen chemistry between Bergman and Bogart did not extend to real life. In fact, Bergman once said she hardly knew her leading man even though they kissed. However, their on-screen romance earned the movie and the actor's accolades from fans and critics alike. Bogart was nominated for the Oscar, but he lost to Watch on the Rhines by Paul Lucas. The movie won the Best Picture Academy Award in 1943 after Casablanca, Bogart became one of the most sought-after actors in Hollywood. He also became the biggest paid actor of his time with an annual income of almost half a million dollars. In Broadway, Bogart started his acting career playing male ingenues. What endeared Bogart to his fans was his ability to convey duality on screen. He played the heroes with an intriguing dark side. He promoted cynicism and made it endearing to filmgoers. Even when he played tough guy characters, he would show a vulnerable side. The attitude of detached coolness and worldliness appealed to the public, possibly because they were tired of portrayals of one-dimensional strong characters that expressed only anger and discontent. His powerful effect on audiences worldwide gave him plenty of opportunity to be cast in films that were critically acclaimed while also recognizing box office hits. Aside from his major films, most of which are now revered classics, Bogart also appeared in minor films such as Sarah, Passage to Marseilles, Dark Passage, Beat the Devil, and The Barefoot Contessa. Humphrey Bogart was married to three women before he finally settled down with the love of his life. His former wives were Martha Gellin, Mary Welsh, and Mayo Mahot. In 1945, after filing for divorce from his third wife, Humphrey Bogart was married to the actress and glamour girl Lauren Bacall. It was his fourth marriage and her first. Bogart and Bacall tied the knot on May 21st in Ohio in a private ceremony held in the home of Louis Broomfield, the Pulitzer-winning author, a close friend of the actor. The first three marriages were not successful as a relationship with McCall, who was his co-star in the numerous films including Key Largo, Dark Passage, To Have and Have Not, The Big Sleep, and The Petrified Forest. When they were married, Lauren McCall was 24 years younger than Bogart. Nevertheless, they found lasting love and happiness and had two children. Their firstborn son was named Stephen Humphrey Bogart. They had a daughter three years later and named her Leslie Howard Bogart. Stephen's name was taken from the character his father played in To Have and To Have Not and the movie when Lauren and Humphrey first met while filming in 1944. Meanwhile, Leslie's name was taken from the father's co-star in the movie The Petrified Forest. The happy couple raised a family in Los Angeles in a mansion at Hombly Hills. Bogart made his last full feature film, The Harder They Fall, in 1956. He died in January 13, 1957, on the day after falling into a coma. Bogart was 57 years old. He died of esophageal cancer and was diagnosed in 1956. He underwent surgery, but by the time he was detected, the cancer had already spread and treatments did not influence its course. Bogart's health deteriorated quickly and he needed to use a wheelchair for mobility. In his funeral at the All Saints Episcopal Church, the director John Huston gave the eulogy, ending with the tribute to Bogart with these words, He is quite irreplaceable. There will never be another one like him. Humphrey Bogart delivered some of his most memorable lines in the Hollywood history. Many generations of fans of American movies know that he said the immortal line from Casablanca, Here's looking at you, kid. Humphrey Bogart received his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame posthumously. The ceremony was held on February 8, 1960. More recently, in June 24, 2006, he was honored with his native New York with a commemorative ceremony within a section of 103rd Street in New York City. The stretch between Broadway and West End Avenue was renamed Humphrey Bogart Place. His wife and children were in attendance. Bogart's admirers believe that his singular place in film history was largely attributed to his image and integrity that he projected. He was a man of his word. He kept his code of honor that seemed to have been lost in the film industry today. 
They say that contemporary actors can learn a lot from Humphrey Bogart. He made great films, but he also made B-movies. Yet, there is no one movie in his filmography that he considered as really bad. He was a hard worker who committed to each and every role he played. I hope you enjoyed this podcast about Humphrey Bogart. If you want to know more about Bogart, I have included some links in the description of this video. Please don't forget to give the podcast a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.